G'day ladies and gents, welcome to War Thunder with Mags, and welcome to my first impressions of the MiG-9. Now, the MiG-9 is a recent unlock for me. I just unlocked this plane yesterday, put it in my queue, and I've taken it out for its first, well, basically through its free repairs. What you're seeing here is going to be the first, this is the first battle I've ever flown in the aircraft, and the following two are the first three, make up the first three battles that I ever had in this plane. First thing, the takeoff. This is the vampire all over again. As you can see, 110, 130, 140, 150. My SUV would out accelerate this plane down a runway. It's so, so slow, and it runs into the same issue as the vampire does. It barely gets, at least in its stock form, it barely gets enough airspeed up to be able to take off before it runs out of tarmac to try and get the plane off the ground on. Now, it does do slightly better than the Vampire here. It hits 300 by the end of the runway, but I have a sneaking suspicion that if I went into test mode that the Russian runway is longer than the Allied runway on this map. Now, this is Korea again. Just beginning my climb over the mountains. The bit that is a little bit different here is it will climb. It's not a great climber, but it will maintain speed and it will climb at a reasonable angle. Now, for those of you who have ever wondered why prop fighters seem to be able to get to the battlefield on the Korea map faster than the MiG-9s can, here you can see why. I've taken me about a minute 20 just to get to this point in my takeoff. Now, I was 60 seconds late in my spawning in because I was getting this recording software set up ready to go. And the most advanced MiG-9 on this map, that is the MiG-9 that has managed to get the furthest distance away from me, is only about 3 kilometers, and it had a 60 second head start on my takeoff. Meanwhile, there's a MiG-3 on screen at the moment that is over 15 kilometers away, and it would be further, except it's basically ran out of map, or ran out of distance that it wishes to travel. It's sitting over top of the enemy planes. And this is the big problem that I seem to have encountered with the MiG-9. It's not a bad plane. Its fault is what it winds up fighting. Its, its takeoff speed is about equivalent to the Vampire, as you've just seen. It's ridiculously slow. Its maneuverability is okay. It's not great. Its firepower is pretty good, if you can get it on target. Two different caliber cannons is a nightmare to aim. Its roll rate is about average, its speed is about average, its energy retention is about average. There's nothing spectacular about the aircraft. But I can tell you that this match here is nothing special for the kind of matchmaking that the MiG-9 gets. This is basically what happens every battle that I've flown it so far. And I've flown this plane out of free repairs now. I've had uh, almost 20 matches in it. Every single battle, you wind up with F-86s and MiGs. The F-86s and the MiG-15s go to the center of the map and promptly kill one another and everything around them. And you basically rock up to the party late. You are either going to get slaughtered because the F-86s have won the battle, the MiG-15s have all died, and you've now got to take on F-86 F-2s in combat. Maybe you'll get lucky, but you most likely won't. Or you're going to run into a situation like you can see here. I'm still trying to get to the battlefield. I've only just hit 10,000 feet. Two thirds of the enemy team's dead. The MiG-15s have slaughtered everyone. I haven't even. I'm not even close to being within gun range yet. The only reason I'm closing in on these MiGs at the moment is because they're actually flying towards me. As you see, over half the enemy team's already wiped out, and the numbers are still ticking. We've lost two players in this whole period. Now this was a complete, utter and total slaughter, this match. Uh, all the enemy aircraft that have been wiped out so far have been the enemy's F-86s. All that's left is F-9Fs and F-80Cs flying around the battlefield, and just look at the swarm. I've got to put this thing into a steep angle dive and get away all of the energy that I've built up, all the altitude that I've built up, just to have a chance of maybe getting to fire the gun before this match ends. And that's all I am trying to do, get a chance to fire the gun before it's over. Now 
But as I was saying before, the plane itself isn't that bad. It feels nice to fly. It just, it's too slow for the engagements that it keeps getting itself involved into. It just, it, it cannot get to the fight before the fight is over. All the important things have happened long before the MiG-9 has got even close to the section of the battlefield it needs to be in. It's meant to be an interceptor, but it simply cannot intercept anything. Now, historically the MiG-9 wasn't particularly fast, about 900 kilometers an hour with its max speed. Its engines only had 1,800 pounds of thrust each. They, they were basically reverse engineered versions of the ME-262's engine, bolted on a, down the centre line of the chassis. It does have two though, so that does equate to over 3,000 pounds of thrust total. What's interesting is the aircraft's weight overall is about the same as that of the Vampire, and it has more thrust than the Vampire does, yet it doesn't feel a whole lot quicker. Maneuverability and the damage model are two other things I was expecting more from this plane on as well. Historically, the MiG-9 was recorded in being able to pull anywhere up to 14 G turns, and was an extremely tough nut to crack in terms of damage. However, as you can see here, I'm barely achieving a G in most turns, and that is full elevation, and a simple hit causes it to explode and fire, and that wasn't a lucky shot. Uh, every time I've been shot down so far, that is about how it goes down. A single hit anywhere near the, it's anywhere on the central fuselage seems to light it on fire. So, killed by the last F-86 in the match, but the match still turned out to be a win, as you can imagine. So here's another attempt on getting the guns on target. Now, this is an AIB-17, this is my second match. The takeoff went exactly the same to altitude exactly the same, nothing, nothing's different here from the previous match. I'm not going to be able to keep up with the jets, this one is very even more heavily MiG-15 and Sabre orientated than the last match. In fact in this match I'm one of only two MiG-9s, the rest of the team consists of nothing but MiG-15s and as far as I've seen so far I think I've spotted one F-80C, the rest of the enemy team is Sabres. So I decided I was going to take a crack at this B-17, test out the guns. Now, I would like to claim that first shot was mine that set him on fire, but that was the MiG-15 that dove in from above. However, I do set the second engine on fire here in a second, which is nice. And there's somebody who actually knows how to aim the MiG-9's guns. This is the problem with having multi-caliber weapons. I was getting hits on the fuselage, but the 37 the shell wasn't striking. It was only the 20mm that were making the hits. That second MiG-9 late that came in with somebody who's obviously got more experience with shooting the guns than me, lined up the left-hand side engine, pulled the trigger, and immediately just sheared the wing straight off the aircraft. So its firepower is good, but it will take some learning to actually get all three cannons to hit the target at the same time. Historically, this was actually a real problem for MiG-9s and MiG-15s in the Korean War. There were multi multiple reports all the way through the war of from F-86 Sabre pilots, shooting Star pilots and Panther pilots of being engaged in combat with MiG-series aircraft and watching shells go flying above their plane, watching shell traces go below their plane, but nothing ever striking home in the middle. Now. Historically this plane did have a major fault, which is why it was replaced so quickly with the MiG-15, and it wasn't just a performance issue. The plane itself could actually kill itself by firing its own guns. It, it wasn't a recoil issue, but if you look at the front of a MiG-9, the guns are mounted directly in front of the air intakes. What would actually happen is when the pilot fired the cannons, the gases that came from the projectile around in the gun, the actual propellant gases, would get sucked inside of the turbine and would immediately cause flame outs in the engines. The MiG-9's engines cannot be restarted in the air, so once they have been flamed out, the plane has to try and glide in, and its glide characteristics were not brilliant. With the engines off, in almost every case, the MiG-9 killed the pilot, or at the very least destroyed the aircraft. It was unsalvageable. However, that is the type of fault that I would not expect Gaijin to have to try and model. Many aircraft had that are in the game at the moment had these sort of faults that it wasn't anything that the pilot could do about it. It was a design flaw of the aircraft.
Now, as you can see, I can't keep up with that F80C for speed, but I can maintain pretty close to it in its turn capability. It's still not as much as I would have expected to be capable of, but then again, the plane is stock. Uh, it still can't take a hit, though. For pilots that are currently grinding their way down the MIG line, however, and are going, why the hell am I bothering? If you'd please direct your attention to the right-hand side of the runway, that's why. You can see all three aircraft here spawn in the same time, myself and those two MiG-15s. One is a MiG-15 Biz. I am full throttle trying to get down the runway. There's all the other MiG-9s that spawned in at the same time. They're just starting to roll. Camera comes back around. MiG-15s are already airborne and a kilometre to two kilometres away and accelerating. That's why you're flying the MiG-9. That's the goal right there. I, I couldn't believe it. This is the first time I'd ever got into a match with a MiG-15 in any aircraft from the Russian perspective. I never managed to get into one before, well, before unlocking the MiG-9. And I was shocked as hell watching the speed those things can clear a runway. It's no surprise that they can make it all the way to the, uh, to the American runway on the Korean map in the time that it takes the American planes to get off the ground and get to climb. They, they basically levitate off the ground and just accelerate away. So trying a different angle this time, takeoff speed was a little bit lower, but trying to get into the sky a little bit faster and at least head in the direction. Trying to take high altitude in a MiG-9 seems to be irrelevant. You just cannot do it. That said, in the course of this fight, I did manage to drag myself up to 11,000 feet. Now I'm just looking for a fight. The F-80C off to my right is looking like my best option. I would be very interested in getting a MiG-9 into a battle with an F-80C without anybody else involved. It, I think it would make for some interesting piloting, so a nice leveled out match. Unfortunately, as I said at the start of this, I'm about 20 matches into the MiG-9 so far and I'm yet to see a match that is, doesn't consist of at least 4 to 5 MiG-15s on the, the Russian team and the American team having at least the same amount of Sabres. I've only ever flown a... well, the F-80C match that I uploaded the other day was the only time I've ever flown an F-80C versus MiG-9 match. And it's a real disappointment. I was really hoping to get my hands on one so I could trial this aircraft against aircraft that it was meant to be fighting, or it should be fighting in the terms. This is the problem, of course, of having one error and then trying to compress 10 years of jet development into that one error. There's just, it's not big enough. There needs to be at least two and twice as many battle ranks as there currently are. No point turning after that Sabre, there's absolutely no way I'm going to get there. I might... Ooh, it was close. I'm still getting used to the guns at this point. Full flap to pull up and try and arrest my speed. And this is the problem with getting into fights with F-86s. They can just spiral around and shoot you and there's nothing you can do to counter them. So. The MiG-9. Hopefully it'll get better with upgrades. I will keep you informed. Uh, other than that, the MiG-15 is at the end of this line, so there is hope. Hope you've enjoyed. Click like if you do. Subscribe if you want to see more. Fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.